This morning we're going to continue creating our setout for our extension for our alteration addition project at Thirul. So we needed to first continue mapping the ground floor and then we can map the lower ground floor. Now of course the lower ground floor is the same as the upper ground floor to an extent so that's not all that much work. Then we need to start trying to work out the internal and part of the way that we need to do that is to work out the wall thicknesses. Now we're not always given wall thicknesses. Uh, when it's an existing building it can be a little bit sometimes hard to determine those. We need to know how to measure around corners uh, and we need to have an idea when we're measuring something of what is its composition. So we might not be able to see inside of the wall but we can assume based on the materiality of what we can see what the total composition wall structure and the cladding materials are or the lining materials. So at the moment all we're doing is using lines or using polylines in order to be able to describe our outer shape. We're creating a profile, a outline and from that Point, then we can start to use ArchiCAD like it's really meant to and work in 3D modeling and it, when we're modeling we'll be using our wall tool in order to be able to draw the walls and then our slab tool to be able to represent the slab and our roof to be able to represent the roof. So let's get started. This line across which is our veranda we're measuring this from the same point and we're working across 180 degrees which means we're horizontal holding shift to make sure it stays or following this line. If I hold shift it'll snap to the blue line. R or D in order to be able to type in a number and the number that we're after is 5555. 5555. The next line is also perpendicular creating at 90 degrees so we see that little um, marker in the middle which is showing us it's 90 degrees. The angle also says 90 degrees and we're typing this one in at 8 one five zero. I'll dimension these for you quickly. So you can follow along with what I'm doing it. The next ones get a little bit harder. Down underneath this veranda is the garage. Now the garage is not at the same angle at the house. The garage is skewed and the garage is at the same angle as the boundary. And that's how we're going to define it. So we were using our control box. I'll turn that back on again. Window, palettes, control box. And in our control box, we'll just dock it down the bottom of my screen. And in our control box, we have our offset constraints. Now, I have my offset constraints up here, uh, but you probably don't have this toolbar um, because I haven't shown you how to make this toolbar yet. So we have down in the control box the ability to use our offset constraints. And the way that we're going to use this, just to keep it very simple, is just to draw a line. I'm not really being too careful about how long the line is, as long as it's along the boundary line and bigger than I need it to be. So going past the edge of the house, going past the edge down here. And then when I click, I'm offsetting. So what I'm doing is creating a line that is parallel to the boundary. And then I can choose a distance of what I want that to be. Now, if I move to this point at snaps, we see that that is 1240. We did that before when we created the house, because of course we can see that the house is not parallel and perpendicular to the boundary. Uh, but now we want to draw parallel and perpendicular to the to the boundary and it's slightly harder to draw this way because we can see that it's no longer straight. What am I doing? Another word for this is creating construction lines. And so I'm going to use a, a grey line at the moment. Maybe I'll make that even a little bit lighter just so you can see what I'm talking about. So the grey line is helping us maybe to identify that we don't want to necessarily keep this line or we will but we'll change it. And then we want to copy this line again. So I'm going to select this line, select the line tool, turn the offset tool on, and this time I'm going to magic wand the line. Now when I select a magic wand, it figures out what I want to do. If I hadn't selected the line, it would still magic wand, but it might try to select multiple lines. And now how far do I want this to be away from this line? 4,000. 
875. We see that it drew a black line, that's because that's the base settings that I currently have. If I want to update that, I'll press Alt to pick up that gray line settings and Control Alt to be able to, or Command Alt on my Mac, to be able to choose that line to be the same as this line. So again, I'm just drawing them as construction lines now just to make sense of it. What is the line that I'm missing? I need to add a distance. So now I'll Go back to my pen, 4, which is the outline of the house. I'll click on this point, and I want to go across this way. So I'm drawing the line, and then I'll delete the construction line. There's a lot of different ways to do it. I'm just going to do it this way to keep it simple. I'm mapping that line I've already created, and I'll type in 6020, enter. That's that line length that I want. And then I can measure up, and now... If I move up, we see that it's going to snap for me, uh, but more importantly, it gives me a right angle. And if I was to turn those snaps off, let's turn the snap guides off. When I move up there, we can see that right angle. So we need the cursor to change the right angle it will do that anyway without the snap lines on. We see that I've turned the snap lines off just to make that clear. We do want the snap lines, the grid, the snap guides, uh, but sometimes it, it might be confusing as to what we're snapping to. So that's what we're trying to create. Great, so we've got that line. We can finish it off. We can now connect these two lines. I need to make sure I do this correctly. Where should that join? We can see that we either need to make this line shorter or we need to change this angle. What are we talking about? The distance there, we're talking about 30 mil-ish. So if I make that now 8120, then that angle is pretty much retained. Now I'm trying to not be 100% accurate to the reality, but to keep some rounded, simpler numbers for you to be able to use to make sense of what we're doing. So I'm going to change this. Let's draw the angled dimensions. We're always going to end up with at least one strange number. That's unavoidable. So 620, 4875. And I'll add in those angle dimensions as well, just to explain that, just so it's very clear what we're doing. Let's just change these quickly. And to, to draw the angle, uh, we click on the line or the wall, click on the line and click in the middle. Very, very easy to place. So one, two, three. One, two, three. I'm if you recall, I changed that so that that number was straight. Alternatively, I could make that 90 degrees and that number not true. So if I was to change that, I can do that as well. Let's finish this off. At the moment, you can see I'm just deliberately going through and doing all of the 90s. Not that it makes a difference. I could do the angles at any time. You can see that's a strange angle. And that's about it.